Hey guys, welcome to uh, this webinar. I'm Dr. Bhavesh Patel, and today I'm going to be covering a topic that's of very utmost importance for overall health. In fact, it's one of the biggest problems in America, um, and you've heard about it. People talk about sugar and low carb diets, they talk about ketogenic diets, paleo. And so I wanted to start off uh, introducing everyone to a topic of sugars. Uh, about why it matters and what we should be doing for it to help improve our health. You know, it turns out that, you know, the issues with sugars are many. The most important one is the problem with diabetes. When people have high sugar levels that are high for a number of years, you can get diabetes that leads to complications like high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney issues, uh, loss of sensation in your feet, loss of eyesight, loss of sensation in your hands. Uh, but the, and, and one in th one in 10 Americans or so have diabetes already. What's even more startling is about one in three people are pre-diabetic, meaning they're on their way and they might not know they even have an issue. Um, more on the short-term issue with uh, high blood sugars is it contributes to increased weight and obesity. And just from a uh, vanity standpoint, a lot of people are using low carb diets or they're using ketogenic diets just to lose weight. Uh, another issue with uncontrolled sugars is people's energy levels can go up and down throughout the day. They can feel sluggish, they can feel uh, super jazzed at times and then crash uh, suddenly. And so really understanding the sugar levels and how your body interacts with sugar is what the purpose of this webinar is about. And we're gonna go into that. And last but, lot, lot, last but not least, uh, longevity. We know that when sugar levels are lower for the most of your life, the longer uh, you're gonna live, the, the better those years are going to be. So before I get started, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Dr. Bhavesh Patel. I've been in medical practice for about 25 years. Uh, the last 11 years of my practice, I have focused on a longevity type of medicine. It's called age management medicine. My practice is here in downtown Chicago, and I've been treating hundreds of patients over the last 11 years, achieve optimum health uh, and longevity and, and lives that are full of vitality and vibrancy. I actually came to the practice myself as a patient. I was struggling with my own weight issues and energy issues, and I found the practice Cenogenics. And as I learned about them, I decided I wanted to uh, learn more about how to do it. I just wanna learn how to do this kind of medicine. And so I, I learned how to do the medicine and I started the practice and it's been uh, outstanding. Um, so let's talk about sugar levels. Uh, sugar is an important molecule in your body. You need it for energy. Uh, sugars come in all kinds of forms. There's the simple sugars that you get, which is like table sugar or high fructose corn syrup that you might see in soft drinks or other sources. Then you might've heard of complex carbohydrates. Those are still sugars, but they're longer sugar chains. They're longer molecules that take a little bit more effort for the body to break down. Those are generally preferred over uh, the simple sugars. Uh, but when you have sugar in your body, you're gonna have it, you have to process that sugar and that's done with a hormone called insulin. Uh, your body secretes insulin from the pancreas, which is an organ in your body. And that, uh, increase that amount of insulin that's produced is directly related to how much sugar you get into your bloodstream. So I'm going to explain that a little bit here, uh, how that works. So let's say we're looking at a graph of levels over time. And let's just say this is maybe 8 a.m. and this is 8 p.m. or so. And let's say you wake up in the morning and you have a, f a sugar level, which, you know, we like to see sugar levels in the morning at around 8 a.m. to be at least less than 100. That would be uh, abnormal if you're greater than 100. That means you would be pre-diabetic or you might be uh, a diabetic that's greater than 126. Now, cenogenics, we like to see those numbers even lower. We like to see them less than 86 because we figure that we feel that's more optimum. But let's say you have breakfast at 8 a.m you're gonna see that your sugar levels are going to go up. And depending on how much sugar is in that meal, the sugar level is gonna go higher and higher. Well, the body knows we've gotta get that sugar into the cells 
for your body to use it as energy. Otherwise, it's going to sit in the bloodstream, not getting into the cells, and that causes a number of issues. So you'll see your insulin level start to go up as well to bring that sugar level down. Now, the nice thing is, is that insulin is really effective at its job. And so you're going to see that sugar level start to decline. And as it goes down, as it should, we're going to see the insulin also start to come down. So the problem is insulin goes down a little slower. The time for the sugar levels to get back to normal should be about two hours. So if we say this is about 10 a.m., the scale is going to be way off on this, but you get the point here. But about two hours goes by here. It should be back here. What happens, though, is the sugar starts getting really low. Your insulin's still here. It's still doing the job of taking the sugars down into the lower reference ranges. But this is exactly when you start feeling those hunger pangs and, those, and uh, that energy crash. You start desiring something sweet or something carbohydrate to eat. So you might reach for a piece of candy, a Snickers bar. You might go get some chips. You might get a soda uh, or any kind of food that really starts to bring that blood sugar back up again. As that blood sugar comes back up again, you're going to see this spike of sugar again. And the insulin is also going to start to go up to match that. Then as the sugar, as insulin does its job and the sugars come back down again, you'll see the same kind of pattern repeat itself. So the insulin starts coming down, but you get that sugar crash down here. It goes back up again. And so over the course of the day, you're having these ups and downs. So the ups and downs of the sugar levels and the ups and downs are going to be correlated with your energy levels. Meanwhile, the insulin never gets a chance to fully come back down again. And you end up having this gap of area where the insulin should be a lot lower. And when it's at this level, where it's higher than it should be, insulin turns into a fat storage hormone. So its first job is to drive sugar into the cells. So it's gonna decrease the sugar, but after the sugar's uh, back down to normal, it's gonna start storing fat. And that's where the problem ends up occurring. We end up having fat storage because of the insulin levels being too high. So what we want to try to do when we're eating is to control that sugar curve differently. And the way we're going to do that is by watching how much sugar we get in at any given time. And I'm going to teach you a simple way of doing that uh, here in a few minutes. But let me just show you in a graph what that means. So we've got those same numbers. Again, let's say that's 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. We're gonna have the sugars go up now. Instead of eating something like that's a heavy carbohydrate meal for breakfast, such as oatmeal and bananas and strawberries and blueberries and orange juice, we had something like some healthy eggs and some healthy cheese, maybe a little bit of carbohydrates, but instead of that sugar level getting so high, we're just gonna bring it up a little bit. So the insulin comes up too, but it doesn't have to come up as much as it did as we saw in the first graph. And so hopefully over the course of the day, we're gonna see the sugar levels be a little bit more even throughout the day. And the insulin stays a little bit more even. And this way we're, sort of, we're avoiding this, that big delta that we had uh, up here where that was really causing a lot of the fat storage issues. So how do we do that? Well, there is a great way of doing it. And it's a simple equation. We call it the low glycemic index equation. Every food that you eat has a, a marker called the glycemic index. And that is telling the, they've done some studies where they take a food, they see how fast it will uh, raise sugar levels in the body. But let's just say you're out and about eating and you're trying to find some foods that you're trying to decide if it's uh, gonna be a good choice or not. Um, and what I want to teach today is just a method of looking at the nutrition label and seeing if this is something you should think about eating or not. And we'll even think about how to think about it throughout the day. Now, that equation is you're going to look at the total fat and the total proteins, and you're going to add those together. And that sum, that total of those two components should be greater 
than the amount of fats, I'm sorry, the amount of carbohydrates that we're taking in. And specifically what we call the net carbs. Net carbohydrates is your total carbohydrates minus your fiber. Uh, the way to think about it is the carbohydrates are trapped by fiber. Uh, and so if you subtract the fiber, that's gonna, that's gonna be the actual amount of net carbs you get into your, uh, into your body. And that, that's gonna help with the equation. Now, there's a lot of other things to think about in terms of proteins and fats and carbohydrates. There are gonna be some proteins that are healthier than others, and there are gonna be fats that are, that are healthier than others. But just for the purpose of this webinar, I wanna to stick to just the simple idea of just doing math with nutrition labels. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to go and take some examples. Um, Angela, if you could uh, 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 check the chat, I'm gonna ask anyone who wants to just go ahead and submit a idea for food that we could look up right now and see if, uh, if it's, it's gonna be healthy or not. So uh, just whatever food you're thinking about, uh, whether it's a yogurt or a burger or anything. Uh, we do have one uh, question about hot dogs. Okay. Well, you know, you, I'd probably say that because I'm in Chicago, right? So I love hot dogs, of course, because we're in Chicago. Um, but I'm going to pick, uh, so let's, let's, let's do a hot dog. Uh, that's a good one. So here's how I'm going to do it. This is, an, and everybody can do this. I'm pulling up Google. And I'm going to go to the search. Now, I like Nathan's hot dogs. I think those are pretty good. And not just because I have a guy uh, Nathan named Nathan that works for me. Uh, so I'm going to type in Nathan hot dog nutrition. And here we go. So here's the nutrition label for Nathan's hot dog. So if we look at the amount of fat we have here, there's 15 grams of fat. Then there are seven grams of protein. And that gives us a total of 22 grams. Now I'm gonna look at the carbohydrates. And that's just one gram. So we've got one gram of carbohydrates. So 22 is certainly greater than one, and that is definitely a very low glycemic index meal. This is a meal that's traditionally not going to raise your blood sugar all that much compared to the same amount of uh, food if you're having in terms of carbohydrates. Just for fun, let's add a, as a hot dog. I mean, I, I mean, let's add a bun in there. Uh, in Chicago, uh, St. Rosen's buns are our favorite for Chicago-style hot dogs. So let's look up. Uh, let's see, there's S. Rosen or St. Rosen, but let's see, Rosen, hot dog, maybe it's S. Rosen, hot dog, bun, nutrition, S. Rosen's hot dog, bun, nutrition, okay, and let's see if we have some nutrition, so here we go, again, just using Google, we can find the nutrition for uh, this hot dog, all right, so here we have the hot dog and here's the bun. So the bun we have fat of 2.5 grams. So that's 2.5 there. Protein. So I did not know that you could get four grams of uh, protein from a hot dog bun, but there you go. So we've got 6.5 here. So that's going to give us a total of 28.5 grams of fat and protein with the hot dog and the bun together. And let's look at the carbohydrates. We have 26 grams of carbs. Okay, so 28 is greater than 26. So surprisingly enough, a hot dog with a bun, now without any condiments, is you know doable uh, in terms of it being generally low glycemic um let's just look up mustard we don't eat we don't eat ketchup in chicago for our hot dogs uh plus it does have uh sugar in it so most people don't know one of the hidden sources of sugar is 
uh, ketchup. They have high fructose corn syrup in it. So there's a, usually I think it's about five grams of sugar in a tablespoon, something like that. So let's look at mustard nutrition facts. Here we go. And I'm gonna pull up this Google image here and see what we get here. So here with the with this mustard, there's uh, looks like 1.5 grams of fat. So that even takes it up to about 30 grams here. There's no carbs in mustard. So we're still looking pretty good with mustard. Uh, let's just go and look up ketchup real quick. And then um, if anyone wants to start putting the next food in and Angela can, can kind of get ready. I, just, I do want to see what ketchup looks like here because I haven't looked it up in a while. All right, here's Heinz. That's the best ketchup. Let's see what that image looks like. And yeah, five grams of carbohydrates. So that was, my memory served me well. Okay, um, let's try another one. Dr. Patel, we do have a question about healthy snack, like a cliff bar. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. So let's look up a cliff bar. Um, if I can get to, there we go. So again, this is one where, I mean, this will, this will be pretty straightforward because you're not mixing it with anything. So we could just do that right off, but let's look at Cliff Bar Nutrition Label. Google is auto-completing it for me. And here's one here, Cliff Bar Chocolate Chip. We'll see if I could read the energy label here. Read the, read the label here. Oh boy. This one's a little harder to read, but I can read it from here. It says fat is 1.5 grams. Or no, total fat is five grams. So the fat is five grams. The carbohydrate is 45. I don't think we're gonna meet a low GI index on the cliff bar here. Uh, where's the protein? Protein is nine. Uh, by far, the cliff bar is gonna be heavy. 45 is way greater than uh, 14. So I would not consider this a good supplement if you're trying to keep your sugars low. Um, you know, as we were, as I was mentioning earlier, when we think about low carb diets, there's a few different ways to think about it. Generally for weight loss, at least less than 50 grams for the whole day is what we're gonna be looking for. Uh, if somebody's doing a ketogenic diet, we're looking at less than 20 grams and just general health, if we can keep it underneath hundred, if you're just trying to maintain a good weight under hundred grams of carbs for the day is a, a decent place to try to be. So I would say with this, uh, with this cliff bar, it's, it may be satisfying and it may give you some energy and some sustenance for a while, but I wouldn't consider this one of the, one of the uh, low glycemic type of foods. Um, let's see, I think we can probably do uh, maybe another one. Dr. Patel, we do have a question about pastas. Pastas? Uh, can you ask me if there's any specific kind of pasta? Spaghetti pasta bolognese. Pasta bolognese, all right. Uh, let me just cliff up that out of that real quick. I don't know how to get out of this. Come on. Let me just take another web browser up, I guess. Oh, finally. All right. All right. So we said pasta bolognese. That might be a little bit, that might have to come in. A, is it in a package? That might be a little harder to look up because there's so many different kinds of bolognese. Let's just try a pasta nutrition label first, and then we can add whatever we want into it. So that might be a better way to go. So here we have the dump pasta. And again, this is just an exercise. You're going to do this for yourself, but you look at it. Um, 
one tablespoon of this pasta of this pasta. There's pasta, let's see if that's uh where is the nutrition label? All right, here's the Barilla Rotini pasta. So we'll go with that one just for the example of it. And it says here it's uh, for two ounces of pasta. It's about 42 grams of, of uh, carbohydrates here. So the carbs is 42. Okay. Um, I mean, already there's, and there's just one gram of fat. And the seven grams of protein. All right, so you have seven grams, eight grams total on one side versus the 42 grams on the other. So what can we do with that pasta to make it healthier? What I would suggest is then we want to add in a protein, right? So proteins we can add in are gonna be chicken or eggs or beef. Now I can tell you three and a half ounces or so of a chicken or a beef is gonna be about 30 to 35 grams of protein. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in uh, off the top of my head. So let's just say it's 35. So we got 43. So if we added in some protein, uh, got it to 43, and then we're set to 42 on the pasta side of the equation. And then maybe we add in some olive oil. So let's see what two tablespoons of olive oil looks like. I'm just gonna pick one here. I don't know what we're getting here, but let's see. This is one tablespoon of olive oil. That's 14 grams of fat. So if you had two, that'd be 28. You can certainly get up in the calories when you start getting too much oil, but let's just say either way, the adding the olive oil, the protein in, you're gonna start making that pasta into more of a low glycemic meal. So hopefully that gives us an idea, guys, of um, a way to look at food. You could do this yourself. You could go to Google, look up the nutrition labels. If you did this for all of your meals of the day, you can get an idea of if you're in that 100, gram or greater or 50 grams or 20 grams or whatever your goal is but it's going to give us an idea of how much you're going to uh, spike your blood sugar and we want to keep that blood sugar spiked uh, to be as low as possible you're going to do that by adding in the fats or the proteins and so that comes to a principle we always tell tell our patients which is never eat a carbohydrate alone always pair it with a healthy protein and a healthy fat uh, now, some of the choices we made today weren't healthy proteins or healthy fats. That's going to be for a different webinar. Uh, so definitely come back for more of the webinars where I'll go into some, uh, making those kind of choices. But for today, I just wanted to uh, get across how to keep your insulin levels from spiking so much and help you maintain good weight, uh, maintain a better sense of longevity, keep your pancreas healthy. Um, I think we have questions for maybe, uh, maybe one or two, uh, time for maybe one or two questions. Angela, if anybody has any. We do. Somebody asked if there was a specific time of day after a specific time of day that you should not be eating sugar. Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, if you think about the fact that the insulin is going to take about four to six hours or so for it to come down and that insulin is what's going to be the fat storage hormone, I'd say, you know, after eight or nine, you probably want to start uh, not getting calories on board. If you, if you need a snack and you make the snack a very low glycemic index snack, you could probably get away with it, like a piece of cheese, uh, maybe paired with a little bit of an apple. But if you're just talking about carbohydrates, again, those carbohydrates that are unpaired uh, are going to be like, you know, whether let's say, for example, if it's, uh, you know, I, of course, ice cream is going to be a lot of sugar in your body. So if you're looking for that sweet snack at the end of the day, uh, that's going to spike your insulin up quite a bit. So uh, I'd say the, the, the higher it is on its ability to spike your blood sugar levels, the more impact it's going to have on your insulin. 
the earlier you should be finished eating those kinds of foods. So hopefully that makes sense. We have one last question. Is somebody with um, somebody with diabetes, would, would they want to avoid certain fruits that might be higher in sugar? Yeah, I think it depends on where you're at in your spectrum of diabetes. There's a number called the hemoglobin A1C, which is telling us how high your sugars have been over the long period of time. You wanna see what your fasting blood sugars look like. Uh, but somebody who's got well-controlled diabetes can probably eat fruit a little bit more easily than somebody who's got out of control diabetes. Uh, this, you know, this gets into the, one of our next webinars that we'll be doing, which is about looking at lab tests so that you can see if you're pre-diabetic. Remember one in, th one in three people are pre-diabetic in America, one in 10 are diabetic. And knowing where you're at in the spectrum, uh, you could decide you know, if sugar, how much fruit you could have. But yeah, if you had really out of control diabetes, you might even have no fruits and no sugars until uh, you really get the pancreas uh, healed and the weight off and the diabetes under control. Uh, certainly we don't wanna go uh, forever without fruits. I mean, there are phytonutrients and, and valuable nutrition we're going to get out of, uh, out of the fruits. We want a full spectrum diet, uh, but any diabetic should pair their fruit with a healthy protein or a healthy fat. Uh, so I think guys, I think that's all we have time for today, but this is really fun. Hopefully uh, you learned something today that you can use. Um, we're going to post this video up onto our web page uh, at www.baveshmd. It's right down here. And if you go there, you can you know, post any questions you want. It'll either be on the YouTube page or on the website. But uh, if you have any more questions, you can do that. And uh, if, if you want to learn more, and if this seems like you need uh, more help, I certainly invite you to schedule a call with us. There's a link where you can book a call. We'd be happy to spend some time with you on the phone uh, to see if there's any, any way that we can help. Uh, with that, uh, I think uh, everyone have a great day and I hope everyone enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this, this webinar. Take care.